Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. We're in the fish room. We've got some jobs to do, so this is going to be a bit of a, a fish room files type deal. I've got a couple of things going on, as well as some questions that have been asked about all the Timu stuff. Is it any good? Do I still use any of it? But like I say, I've got some things to fix and sort out, so I'll bring you along the way and we'll do them. Not least, fixing this. Um, so this is just wedged in here, so I need to get some nails and hammer them in. I'm sure that'll be perfectly fine, hammering this in next to the glass, and it won't shatter and destroy everything. But I'll film it, just in case. So, first, an update on this little guy. So this is my Fahaka Puffer. Um, he's at least doubled, if not more, in size since I first got him. He was tiny when I first got him. And I've been pellet training him. So, Fahaka Puffers, they need to have something in their diet that's quite hard, that's going to wear down their beak, so their teeth, if you like. Um, otherwise, you get problems in later life, but snails, clams, things like that, it's not a very rich or varied diet. So a mistake I made with my last one was he would only take clams. Um, and I've been trying to get this one to pellet feed. And hopefully, if I do it now, we've cracked it. He's now realised he's on camera and he isn't going to take the pellets. But let's try again. There we go. So these pellets in and of themselves are actually quite hard. Um, so they do give a little bit of that as well as just being generally nutritious. There you go, he's taking the second one as well. And the way I did that was I've just over the months that I've had him, it's been feeding them things like worms, earthworms, uh, snails, things that you will readily take. And every now and again, just dropping in a little pellet. And these ones are the Hikari Cichlid Gold pellets. Um, I have used various other ones, the Fluvo Bug Bites, things like that. And they're just a great way to get food into them, and I'm so happy that it's worked. It's taken weeks and weeks for them to actually do it readily, but now I can feed them with nothing else and just the pellet, whereas beforehand I would have to put in a bit of chopped up worm and chuck in a pellet, and he would be very suspicious and turn his nose up at it. Then a bit of blood worms and a chopped up pellet. And then just keep persevering with it, and eventually, it's gone down quite well, and he's become a lot more personable. Will spend time out freely with me around where he used to be really shy when he was a lot smaller. Um, so this is his second tank that I've had him in. This is a, a, just a grow out tank. The Hacker Puffers will get much bigger than this. My ultimate plan was to put him in the tank that Humphrey was in, the big five foot aquarium, which is probably where he's going to end up. But he's got a few more ones in here and doing well. So to all the people who are asking about him, he's doing good. As for the Timu stuff, um, if you don't know what I'm on about, a couple of videos back, I'll link it up here somewhere. I did a couple of silly videos about buying random tat off of Timu. Um, and they did send me random tat, like this thing. This is an aquarium filler. I'm sure it's useful to someone, but to me it is not. I've had it hooked down here since I got it, and I've not thought of one application since it turned up. There was an aquarium chiller, which was just nonsense. I have no use for it <laughs> and I couldn't make it work even if I did but anyway there was some tat there but there were some gems and there's some things that I found really useful in the fish room. Exhibit A is the big old turkey baster. I use this all the time for randomly picking out bits of poop and um, for picking out anything that I just don't want in the tank but I can't be bothered to get the whole water change equipment out and do it but also more recently for feeding and um, I've used smaller versions of this for feeding things like brine shrimp um, so I've got a couple of these now, one for poop, one for footing, don't get them confused. Um, and it's really good for if I, for instance, get a cup of brine shrimp, can do a big and then pop it into a tank, works really well. Another beauty is this thing, it's just an algae scraper. But it's a plastic algae scraper, so these bits are detachable. And it came with loads of extra ones as well. And I have been using it extensively because I have a lot of algae. And they're really good, and I haven't felt the need to change them yet either. They haven't dulled like the traditional razor blade types do. Um, so that on a stick would be great. But as it is, it's pretty damn good. I think it costs about a pound or something like that. It's brilliant. So I have this, I have a couple of these as well, dotted around all over the place. But by far and away, the biggest win is this, which is an aquarium float valve. I use it to fill up my tanks when I'm doing water changes. I did for a while go around 
clamping, because I've got several of them again, uh, clamping these to the various tanks that I wanted to use for water changes and just moving this line around. But it's just easier to have one big long line and I move it from tank to tank, clip it onto the side of the glass, turn on the water, the water flows out and then when it fills up, it stops and it works perfectly. I have had a 100% decrease in the amount of floods that I've caused in the fish room. And you may think, well, that can't be very many, but if you've been here well, you know I do it quite a lot. Um, I have flood things on a regular basis because I have the memory of a sieve. Like a sieve? Of a sieve? I have a bad memory and I will routinely start filling up tanks, wander away, get distracted by flashing lights and flood the place. And it has caused me problems in the past, not least wet floor, but I've overflowed tanks, I've run things too cold because they've overfilled for hours and hours and killed tanks of fish. So, absolute lifesaver this one, brilliant. Right, on to the meat of today. Um, this is Mega Tank. If you haven't been here before, this is my DIY tank. I built it myself. It's eight foot by four foot by three foot. And touch wood, it's been doing all right recently. But, I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but thankfully, thanks to Hans, who pointed this out in one of my previous videos, that looks a bit saggy. And it is, because it was one of those jobs I thought, yeah, I'll do that tomorrow. And then six months later, I'm still here. This is basically skirting board that's been cut to size and I've just never got around to fitting it, it's just kind of wedged in place which is fine for these bits but this bit has developed a bit of a sag so I'm just going to pin it up which I'm sure me waving a hammer around here isn't going to cause any problems whatsoever. We shall see. So, needs a steady eye, steady hand. Fish don't seem bothered. I'm playing this a lot cooler than I actually am. <laughs> I, I did think this was going to crack. I'm not the most skillful DIYer in the world, let's put it that way. I ain't no king of DIY. Neither is he. There we go. Salted. It's amazing how a job that takes all of 30 seconds takes you six months to get around to. That'll do. Another of my Timu purchases was these filter bags. Um, now clearly I'm not using these ones, but I did use many of them. I think I got two packs of 10. Um, these are the ones I haven't used yet, but I do maintain these are a fantastic buy. Whether buying them off Timu was cheaper than buying them off eBay or Amazon or any other place. I don't know, because these are quite small. So that's the size of my hand. Um, you can get, and I have, much larger ones, but for a smaller filter, they, they would work out quite well. What I've done with these is just chucked them in the sump of Mega Tank. Um, so as if I need to cycle a new tank, I can just grab a handful, chuck them in another tank, kick start the cycle. And then we've got stuff like this, which I'm just too scared to try. Um, <laughs> A puree resin. I've never heard of it. I can't find any information about it on the internet. I'm sure it's fine. It works just the same as a product like Seachem uh, Puree Gen that you recharge with bleach and stuff like that. But I just, I'm too scared to try it. So I think this is just forever going to sit here. So if you want this, let me know. I might send it to you. Or come and join one of my Friday night live streams. We do a quiz with prizes. This might be a prize one day. Because, um, yeah, I've not got the balls to use it. Other things like these. Um, this was from the team who suggested it, so I bought it. They're called pond gloves, and yeah, they probably would be quite useful. I do have a pond, but it's frozen at the moment, so I'm not going to use them for that. I used them to mess around with Humphrey's tank, um, but he's sadly passed on now, so I don't get to use them for that reason. So these will just be going in the cupboard until pond season kicks back up, and I need to get and mess around with that, because they did work. Just not overly useful. And then there was the fluffy toy. That was from... Timu is suggesting things and I buy everything it suggests and as an aquarium keeper it obviously thought I wanted a fluffy seal. Insert picture of fluffy seal, editor Graham. Um, well, it's not my cup of tea, it was a big hit with my daughter so that actually got used. So I would say a good higher than 50-50 success rate on everything that I got from Timu. None of it was rubbish. None of it was scams. So, you know, when Wish first started, there was lots of things like 
they would sell you a picture of saying aquarium media and it would look like a mountain of it and you'd get one piece of media and it was a penny and you were like oh I'm surprised N nothing like that and it all came quite quickly and their customer service seemed okay for the things when I had things missing turns out I didn't have things missing I was just an idiot but it was fine the biggest comment on all my Timu videos was people saying your identity is going to be stolen they're just a big scam for the Chinese government they're stealing your data what they're stealing the fact that I like aquariums and I live in a house so to the tinfoil hat brigade nothing like that has happened yet but you know when it does you can come back and tell me how wrong I was it's all been fine so would I recommend it? definitely but shop around and just buy the things you want not like this idiot and this is another one I use on a daily basis. So in conjunction with the float valve, I have... So, it's a bit crowded around here at the moment because I've got the brine shrimp up and running. But attach this to the discus tank. And then this tube here is actually in the discus tank. Now, it was called an automatic siphon, which I guess is what it is, but on the end is a clip. If I could release that clip, I can put this into my water overflow and you can't see it but it basically lets water out slowly and then this refills it slowly so it's kind of an automatic water change. I can go away and forget about this knowing that this is going to drip out at a rate of not very much and refill it at a rate of not very much. So there's no big swing in per temperatures, parameters, all that kind of stuff. I already take care of these things anyway because everything is temperature and parameter matched in the fish room but you could use this in lots of situations so I use it just to stop me forgetting about it so let it drain for a couple hours top up for a couple hours water change done and then when I want to stop it I think I've taken enough water out it's just a case of crimping it again get this bit done goes back in there and waits till next time if I want to do a big water change yeah I can siphon it out and just leave this running that works too just gives you extra options and um, so well I don't really use it just to start siphons I use it as an ongoing water change thing it's brilliant there you go I'm the master of multitasking now I've managed to do a few water changes fix a few things and make a video so to sum up the Timu stuff well it's not my everyday go-to resource for fish keeping supplies and stuff I do actually use quite a lot of the stuff that I got um, I'll leave you with a quick update on the discus. So we've got the breeding discus in here. Five, six days ago now, they went free swimming. Um, they're doing okay. We have lost a few. Well, a few of the fry have not made it this far and I'm kind of okay with that. Um, it matches my previous experience that the first couple of batches, um, the yield's quite low. So whatever you start out with, they drop off quite rapidly and they get better over time so I think we've got about a dozen or so left. The parents both look really healthy, they are not looking beat up at all, the fry are doing really well at sticking around them uh, and they seem to be getting it so the parents will give each other a rest so right now if you can see them they both look quite bright um, what I have observed is they will take turners, turners? What I've observed, that's hard to say what I have observed is that they take turns to darken up um, so to give each other a break I think it is and what happens is they hang out together quite a lot one will be dark, one will be light the dark one is what attracts the fry the fry go onto the dark one, feed off their slime coat and then when that one's had enough the other one darkens up now again, I might be anthropomorphising here and saying they're, they're helping each other and being good parents here and it might just be completely uh, random but yeah, it seems to be working. They're getting a lot more confident to be out and about and they were quite skittish at first when they were uh, had all the fry swimming around them and I, I wouldn't be able to do this. For instance, if I was up here they'd both be at the back of the tank trying to hide away. Now they don't seem to care quite so much. So they're doing alright. So thank you very much for joining me. If you like this kind of thing make sure you hit that subscribe button or come and join us on a Friday night. We have a bit of fun on a Friday night, 9pm UK time. Uh, do a live stream, have a quiz, topics of the day, whatever it might be. Come and ask me anything. That's the place to come and ask me anything. Uh, if you want to see any of these fish tanks close up, you can maybe get the GoPro out and go for a bit of a wonder. But yes, come and join me there or just go and watch another video. Always helpful. One last thing before you go. There is still time. If you want to get your Aquarium Adventures 2024 calendar, 
Um, available now from the Aquarium Adventures website. Link down below. This is raising money for two good causes. We've got the Freshwater Life Project as well as the Amazon Research Centre for Ornamental Fishes. All proceeds from this are going towards that. So if you want a calendar with all these lovely pictures submitted by myself and my viewers, um, go and buy it there. Thanks. See you in the next one. Bye.